Uh, calling to order this uh, Tuesday, February 13th meeting of the Town of Court and Madera Planning Commission. Uh, would you please join me in the Pledge of, the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Wolf, would you call the roll, please? Commissioner Metcalf? Here. Commissioner Bundy? Here. Commissioner Chase? Here. Commissioner Friedman? Commissioner Lee? Here. Thank you. We're uh, one shy tonight. Um, and I believe for uh, number five, uh, Dr. Bundy will recuse himself and leave the meeting at that point. Yes. So. Okay. So that said, at this point in the meeting, if you have a, a subject on which you'd like to comment that is not on tonight's agenda, please do so. You have three minutes to speak, state your name, and go forth. I don't believe we have anyone here to do that tonight, so we will have no public comment. We close the public comment section, and we move on to our continued hearing. This is for 8 Westward Drive, a design review application PL2017. 0045 for a new 4360 square foot two level single family dwelling at 8 Westward Drive. This is a continuation of two previous uh, public hearings. And Mr. Bush, this is yours to describe. All righty. So this is actually the fourth hearing for this item. All right. um, but this is uh, a continuation from January 23rd. Um, where this application was heard. Um, it's since been revised um, in response to comments received uh, at that hearing. Um, the Planning Commission directed the applicant to um, revise the plans based on um, issues with uh, view blockage from a particular you know, playroom, as it's labeled on the plans, uh, in the northwest corner of the upper floor of the, of the proposed structure. Um, uh, following that date, uh, the applicants met with uh, the neighboring property owner, uh, Tom Sherwood, at 10 Westward, um, where this view uh, kind of corridor is being considered from, uh, and modified one of the story poles uh, to establish a line of sight that would then provide sort of the boundaries in which they would redesign and have redesigned uh, that corner of the, of the structure. Um, so on, so that's shown on, on sheet A5 and referenced in the staff report, of course. Um, what ultimately happened was that that, that wall was moved, um, moved in two directions. It's shown, if we can pull that up here as a reference. But uh, that wall moved uh, two feet to the, the, the northernmost wall moved two feet to the south right here. And then the western wall here moved um, about one foot, nine, nine and a half inches as shown here. Um, and so I'll let the applicant speak to this. This was provided in their plan set to kind of describe their methodology for trying to meet the, um, the Planning Commission's direct in, direction given at the last meeting. Um, also, I wanted to uh, call your attention to some additional materials that weren't included in the packet that were actually submitted um, this afternoon by uh, Mr. Sherwood. Um, those have been provided to you and there's additional copies at the back of the, the back of the room as well. Um, beyond that, um, there was a, a particular photo that was considered um, at the prior hearing um, as a sort of a reference point or a, a particular location from which this view was being uh, evaluated. Um, I have all those prior materials from the, from the last hearing. Uh, if, if need be for reference, and that's, uh, that concludes my presentation. Happy to answer any questions on that process leading up to tonight. And, and just for the record, we also distributed um, other correspondence, not only from Mr. Sherwood, but also from the applicant um, as well. Okay. Yeah, we have that. Um, I believe everybody has read the, uh, so I see a thorough acknowledgement that everyone has read this. Uh, in information on our on the dais here um mr bush are you uh, going to present anything else in image or are you going to let the applicant and uh, appellant do that 
Um, so photos were provided by the applicant um, and included in an attachment. I have those as reference here um, as well, but I'll leave it up to the applicant to provide okay. those. All right. So please, uh, without further delay, the applicant, please. He needs a uh, handheld device. Okay, let's get you. Testing, testing. <clears throat> good evening, good evening, commissioners. My name is Chris Skelton, and I'm pleased to be presenting again on behalf of the owners and applicant of West uh, Eight Westward Drive. Uh, I, I will try to be brief. Uh, the issues were uh, seemingly isolated over the past few hearings to one main point of contention: the northwest story pole and uh, and the direction that was given by the commission at the prior hearing on January 23rd. Um, so I want to really quickly go back in time to the December hearing so that we can reiterate or I can show you again what were the photos that were distributed. Um, I was a little disappointed to find out late this afternoon, this evening, that uh, the neighbor, Mr. Sherwood, is uh, not supporting or, or neutral about the project, but rather still opposes it. Point of correction, there is no appellant yet. Correct. <laughs> My mistake. Right. Although it seems like it's telegraphed to, to go that direction, unfortunately. So uh, six photos were taken at a joint site visit December 21st. Uh, Mr. Bush uh, was present. Uh, Mr. Sherwood uh, helped identify and locate the tripod where the photos were taken, a variety of different locations on his property. Uh, observing the story polls at that time, it was the shared understanding that those photos were going to serve as the baseline for future revisions and, and view uh, consideration. So these are the photos. The, I want to draw your attention, pardon me, <coughs> I want to draw your attention to the, uh, what we've referenced as the intermediary bedroom pole on the northern wall. It's the white pole in all of these photos. Uh, again, six photos, photo one, photo two. Photo three is the outlier from the view angle where it's showing uh, the pole in the middle of the chimney. Photo four, with it way outside to the far left. Photo five, again, far outside to the left of the chimney. And photo six, with no view from the rear patio and everyone hanging out. <clears throat> Fast forward in time, we had the January 23rd hearing. Uh, at that time, the commission gave very specific direction in reference to that intermediary bedroom north, uh, northern pole. Uh, these are the following three photos that were distributed. The correspondence that we provided tonight uh, referenced those photos that were distributed to the neighbor following this meeting, as well as a follow-up communication to the neighbor, providing them with plans in advance of this evening's hearing. We didn't hear any response from the neighbor. Um, we thought that we were in full agreement. And again, it's sort of disappointing to review and, and receive the communication at the 11th hour, uh, continue to object. So again, these photos uh, represent what uh, Mr. Sherwood and I did at his property. Again, he set up the tripod and aligned it with what he believed to be the view angle. I think the important fixture here are the I guess wind chimes or decorative features on the left-hand side. It was a foggy morning. Um, unfortunately, we can't control the weather all the time here. And then the, oh, pardon me. And then, so we, uh, the tripod was set up. We took a, a photo, fully zoomed out, and then we zoomed in, uh, keeping the tripod fixed uh, so that you could see 
Um, the, ge the gentleman on the roof is holding a pole behind uh, the white pole, the fixture, and it lines up with the, um, with the chimney. And it, he's holding a two by four. Uh, and I can say uh, that Mr. Sherwood and I stood there uh, somewhat painstakingly adjusting the two by four up to the inch. Um, and I, I did remind him that it is a two by four and that there's a, a certain amount of deviation with that relative to a story pole. So you can see in this photo that basically we, <clears throat> what, what we did was we left the existing northwest corner story pole in its place and we only moved for this exercise the story pole on a single axis, on a single east-west axis, so that we could reverse engineer how we could redesign this feature. By finding this data point, we were able to formulate a triangle using the two known points and a third data point, all right? The uh, red circle here shows where we identified the third data point, 34 inches east of where the pre-existing story pole was. So that was brought back, and that's what forms this triangle. From there, the architect uh, used his design uh, powers to shift the wall in, south, and east. Uh, to make the most functional space so that it would not encroach beyond that line of sight. There seems to be a point of confusion, uh, at least based on what, what I read in Mr. Sherwood's letter about what was, what was the direction from the last hearing. And so I want to juxtapose the two photos that we understood were to serve as the baseline. This is the first photo. This is from December. Uh, again, the wind chimes are the point of reference. The wind chimes do shift a little bit in the photo, and so I found that this board with the knot in it also is a good fixed point that we used. Here is the second photo that was taken January 26th. Again, the same knot. Um, when you flip between these two photos, you will see that the white pole consistently lines up with the outside left edge of the chimney, uh, which is uh, Project West. Once again, uh, the, the poles line up with the outside left western edge of the chimney, and the, the only uh, fixed points that we could find um, were as consistent as possible. So, you know, one of the, the things that we wrestled with throughout the process was getting clear objective guidance. And uh, I said at the last hearing, I'm not sure that we got that clear objective guidance in December, but the commission was really uh, terrific in providing us that, that quantifiable information in January. Uh, we worked with Mr. Sherwood that same week, that night, I think I went back and emailed him and said, hey, can we get together? What's the earliest availability? At the end of the January hearing, Mr. Sherwood is on record saying, with that line, I am fine. And it's in reference to the white, white story pole at the intermediary uh, uh, bedroom. Um, I think we were, we were all in agreement at that hearing. We understood that we needed to come back because the floor plan did change. It didn't just shift three feet to the, to the right. Um, there was a little bit of push and pull along that view angle. So <clears throat> there are a couple of points. Uh, I, I believe that the project that we've presented satisfies the guidance that was provided to us. There are a couple of points that I'd like to raise for your consideration in including within the uh, facts that are identified in the resolution under finding three. All right, finding three is what we've been wrestling with for a couple of months now. And it reads that the project will not significantly and adversely affect views, sunlight, or privacy of any nearby residents. Um, 
Mr. Bush uh, and, and staff has done a terrific job of describing and detailing all of the facts that go into the findings. Uh, for this particular element, I'd like to ask that the Commission consider adopting a couple of other uh, uh, data points and uh, pieces of evidence to supplement what staff has already provided for you. Namely, that the existing view is perceived from an artificially raised deck, that there's a solid wood fence between the properties in existence at the time of this application that obstructs any views from on-grade patio uh, uh, from anywhere in the rear property at 10 Westward. We showed photos of that earlier. That the existing view is partially obstructed by both near and distant trees. That the existing view is partially obstructed by utility lines. And that the view views as a term is undefined in the municipal code and that some impact on view is tolerated. With that, I'll conclude. Uh, I think that we've uh, exhausted this process, uh, and I apologize for making it somewhat mathematical and, and quantitative when it is and can be perceived as a qualitative element in the findings. Um, but it, you know, we went into it last time. Uh, you know it when you see it, and I don't think that, uh, as presented, this is a significant and adverse view impact. So we're asking that the commission approve the project as presented this evening. Uh, based on the plans that you have. Thank you very much. Uh, before you leave the uh, podium there, uh, do any of the other commissioners have any questions? Uh, Phyllis? No. Dr. Bundy? Yeah, Chris, I think you were saying that the one pole that's still up uh, that's to the left was just the uh, pole that was left over from the January hearing, and the two-by-four is representative of the outside edge of the uh, uh, bed or playroom. That's correct. And the reason why we didn't remove the pole, even though it may cause confusion, is because that was what was previously certified. And we didn't want anyone to think that there was sort of shenanigans or gamesmanship. And that's why the, the two by four is such a different material. It's really meant to draw your eyes to that and so that you can see how things have changed. Um, since since the last hearing okay the the other uh, question I went out uh, the other day and uh, observed that and that, that does uh, line up uh, with the uh, outrage of the chimney uh, was there any concern from the architect or the applicant in relationship to the dying Monterey pine that's in the uh, north uh, west corner of mr. Sherwood's property well, uh, I know that's not the purview of the Planning Commission, but yeah. uh, that was something that was obvious to me as a problem in relationship to, you know, this uh, new development. Yeah, I mean, we're always concerned when there are potential hazards that could affect our property. Um, we didn't feel like this was the appropriate uh, forum or time to raise possible fire or, you know, property liability issues with Mr. Mr. Sherwood. Um, you know, I, we hope that as a property owner, he sees the inherent risk of it, you know, potentially having a catastrophe on his own property and, and that he would want to proactively take uh, steps to avoid that. But it's on, it, I mean, unfortunately, it's on his property and outside of our control. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, Charles, do you have anything you would like to ask? No. Chris, go on. All right. Um, I just want to uh, clarify then. Um, that is the corner of the building, not the deck that he's holding the two by four, is that right? Correct, uh, yeah. e exterior face of building. Right, and these are the same pictures that are in the staff report, so I'm asking staff, uh, who took these pictures? Uh, did you or? They were provided by the applicant. Provided by the applicant, yep. okay. All right, thank and, you. And I took them with, with Mr. Sherwood. Mr. Sherwood positioned the tripod, and I think he actually hit the button, but it was on my camera that I downloaded and then immediately distributed to him. Right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Any other questions for staff after hearing that presentation from anybody? Phyllis? No. no. Dr. Bob? No. no. And Charles? No. no. None for you. Okay. So um, at this point, then, I would open this up to public comment. So, as usual, we have a, a three-minute time period for making public comment. So, please state your name and uh, 
at least your town of residence. Um, please step up to the microphone, and you, I'll start the timer. You have three minutes, please. Who's going to speak? No one is going to speak about this application. This is public comment section. All right. I was expecting Mr. Sherwood to have someone here or something. So. You know, he, he miswrote it in the letter, but he said he wasn't coming. Yeah. Um, someone from him, but we don't have that. So we have no public comment. We will close the public comment section of this, and then um, I'll bring it back to the dais here, and we'll discuss what we've seen in these applications and whether we can uh, prove it or deny it. So, Phyllis, I'll start with you. I think we've seen significant change from the original design. I think the applicant has made a lot of changes trying to meet all of the parameters we've set. We've all been to Mr. Sherwood's house. We've all had a look. And we gave pretty clear instructions at the last hearing that we wanted to see the pole moved and the edge of, <clears throat> I guess it's the playroom now, to be in line with the chimney. It's been done. Plus the fact Mr. Sherwood in his letter is already talking about appealing it to the council. So I just think we ought to go ahead and not have any more hearings and make a decision and let it move on. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Bundy. Yeah, I think from the last meeting, Mr. Sherwood said uh, he, wasn't, he would not be happy with the view blockage, but that he could live with the proposed plan. And I think the proposed plan is, uh, is what we're looking at. And while there is some view blockage, I uh, feel it is uh, not uh, significant at this point. And I can support it. All right. Charles. Yeah, I, I also drew that line and kind of said what the parameter was. And, and uh, I commend the applicant in actually working with the neighbor and going over there multiple times to, um, in what my mind uh, sh resolves the issue of, of the view blockage. And I can understand Mr. Sherwood's position. You know, any change at some point uh, might be objectionable. but. At this point, within the findings, I can make them. So um, I just ask that he understands, uh, you know, the decision. So. All right. Thank you. Um, it's always tough for the commission to consider any type of impact on a neighbor, and the applicant has made, I think, an effort to reduce the uh, impact on the neighbor, and per our instructions, has followed that. Um, the um, neighborhood is one of confusing directions and views, uh, primary, secondary, many ways of looking at different elements of the surrounding bay. So um, I think they've reduced this to a minimal and still give themselves a uh, second story and a habitable house. So I can make the findings for this without any additional uh, conditions. And I would entertain a motion for this uh, resolution number 18 002. Oh, sorry, are you waiting? We were just talking. I, I, I was just going to ask uh, since the applicant um, suggested it in his presentation. And it's entirely up to the commission if they uh, desire to supplement the, fi the the finding number three with any of the recommendations that um, the applicant recommended in his presentation. You know, staff doesn't feels that we did a, you know, obviously wrote the findings and and uh, the commission's looked at those thoroughly and touches on many, if not all, of these. But it's up to the commission to decide if the record should be supplemented. And so I just right. wanted to. Bring that to your attention. I, Not saying it needs to be, but right. And when I said that, I particularly was thinking of these things. Um, I think that the record speaks for itself, um, and that 
um, any of the conditions of uh, number two up there that the applicant has put on the screen, the solid wood fence. I don't believe that has any bearing on the approval of it um, and that it is a fact of existence there. Um, it doesn't in any way um, impact the application um, or in any way is there a right to remove the wood fence abridged by the approval of this application or any action that we might take. So he can put up a glass wall um, and the applicant can uh, do nothing with it. So, yeah. So. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Mr. Sherwood did say that since his view only exists when standing up, that view he's concerned about, that he was thinking about taking down right. the wood fence and putting up a glass type fence, uh, similar to what you were going to have around the uh, upper patio. So then he'd be able to have even more, he actually finally have a view sitting down. He should be happy about that. Right. So in that way, he can, he's, free, he's free to apply to the building department for a, a different type of fence at any time. So, Not uh, while he's appealing to the council, said, I hope. Um, uh, the story polls uh, would stay in place until such a time as the appeal period yes. expires. Um, so with that said, um, we will bring a motion for a vote. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do it, Bob? Yeah. Uh, I move that uh, we approve design review application PL 2017-0045 for a new 4,360-square-foot, two-level, single-family dwelling at 8 Westward Drive. Second. I Second. Okay. Yeah, I just want to clarify that that is, you're referring to resolution number 18-002 that's in your pack. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Commissioner, Commissioner Bundy, aye. Commissioner Lee, aye. Vice Chair Metcalf, aye. Chairman Chase, aye. And the record will note Commissioner Friedman is absent. Okay. And for the record, will you um, read the necessary paperwork, Mr. Bush? Following action by the Planning Commission at a public hearing or meeting, any decision of the Planning Commission may be appealed to the Town Council within 10 calendar days. Appeal forms are available at the Planning Department in Town Hall, and a $300 filing fee is required. All right. Thank you very much. We can move on from this. I hope. Is this your neighborhood? Is this your neighborhood? Yeah. 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 All right, Bob, so um, you'll have to um, go home and watch the Olympics. Can you just state for the record, please, uh, on this item? Uh, I wish to, uh, to recuse myself because uh, I'm within uh, 300 feet of the uh, property uh, with the uh, proposal for the remodel. Thank you. Good night. All right, so um, this is a new hearing that we're here to consider for 109 Golden Hind Passage. This is Design Review Application PL 2017-0127 for the addition of a second story addition to an existing single story dwelling at 109 Golden Hind Passage. Um, I just want to check with the other commissioners. Have you been by the residents over there? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Okay, I have too. So, uh, with that said, Mr. Bush, please proceed. Thank you. So, this is a design review application um, for a second story addition to existing uh, single story dwelling um, that would also include elevating the structure um, above the floodplain to meet uh, FEMA and town requirements for um, a substantial development in the in the floodplain so this is a, a 7200 square foot lot um, as shown here in this in this vicinity map um, it is it borders uh, to the back of the lot uh, finger of uh, San Clemente Creek and the marsh um, and then abuts uh, Golden Hind Passage uh, on the front elevation so this is a neighborhood um, that was originally 
um, single story construction, um, number of homes over, you know, over the last 50 years or so um, have added second stories. Uh, I have several photos that I'll show just to kind of uh, paint a picture of what some of those other kind of comparable properties have looked like um, going through this process. Um, there's also many uh, homes, single story, two story, that have been elevated above the floodplain. Um, I believe I have some examples of those as well. Um, this is, I can kind of go, go through some of those. These are um, primarily on uh, Golden Hine. This is within a couple hundred feet of the, of the uh, subject property, an example of a, of a two-story addition. They kind of come in different shapes and, and forms. Um, here's another, another example. Some of them are, you know, centered. Some are off, you know, asymmetrical and off to the side. Um, some kind of are tucked into the roof. There's a variety of different um, sort of iterations that you see here. Um, this is somewhat comparable to uh, just in terms of the bias toward locating over a single uh, portion of the house over the garage. Um, what you see here, you know, some of these some of these houses with these second story additions um, at the time um, may not have been required to elevate the home. So you're you're not seeing exact comparables, but just uh, kind of looking at the variety of designs of, of these additions in the neighborhood here. So looking at the kind of starting with the floor plan, um, I think the intent here, the design intent of the applicants is to maintain the, the floor plan of the lower floor uh, as much as possible. Uh, the only changes that you see are really related to, well, the primary changes are related to the addition of the stairway, obviously to get up to the new, the new second floor. Um, it's been located adjacent to the garage, Util utilizes some of the garage space, but they're still preserving the required um, dimensions for meeting the parking requirements. Um, and beyond that, that's the, that's the primary change that you're seeing here. There's also an extension of, uh, of the porch. Uh, I think it adds about 20 square feet. So it's a covered porch element, kind of extends off the front. We'll see those in the elevations as well. Here is the uh, second floor. This is only showing a portion of the lower floor kind of behind it um, to, to provide the setting here. Uh, it would provide for a master, master suite, so the master bedroom there, and the, obviously all the, the closet, the bathroom, and all that, um, as well as the stairs in the office. Um, the bottom of this plan would be the west elevation that would be facing um, toward you know toward tam across the street across um, golden nine passage obviously the back of the house is going to face that section of the creek that we saw in the vicinity map um, the other houses on golden hind that are a couple hundred feet behind that um, so this would provide for a master suite in an office um, it's been located uh, with setbacks from both the garage which again is on the bottom bottom of this rendering here uh, setbacks from the north elevation the south elevation as well and from the rear um, one of the things that you see here as well, although it's a little bit more clear in the elevations, is that the, um, in elevating the house, the whole structure would be elevated two and a half feet uh, to meet those uh, floodplain development requirements. Um, the garage would stay in place because it's not required to be uh, elevated. It's not habitable space. Um, so there is a little bit of a difference in the height between the office and the, um, the rest of the addition here. So there's like a, one or two steps that sort of separate those two, those two levels. So here's what you see currently from the front, uh, the front of the house and the proposed addition. Um, this is where you see the, that sort of difference in elevation between the house, which we raised the new um, roof over that. Uh, lower floor is shown here with the dotted dashed line showing the, the prior height um, prior to the elevation changing. Um, and then you see the articulation in the roof lines. Um, you have the office, which is on the furthest left of the upper floor, which has the roof that's a, a couple feet below the highest peak of the roof, which would be over the master suite. Um, here's the existing east elevation. Again, the, this was what would be seen from approximately 200 feet to the east from the other houses on Golden Hine that currently look their backyards face west. Um, again, showing sort of how it, it's integrated into the roof line. Um, there's also a deck that would be added, kind of extending down into the, into the rear yard that's shown here. The north elevation, um, 
existing and proposed. Again, you see the use of clear story windows. Uh, clear story windows are, are used on the, both the north and south elevations um, because those are you know, closest to neighboring properties um, with the intent to pre preserve as much privacy as possible here. So these are, these are generally high windows um, and do not create any, any privacy concerns for those adjacent neighbors, um, both of which have provided letters of approval that are um, included as an attachment in the, in the staff report packet. Um, looking at the south elevation now, uh, there is a window on the office, um, as shown in the staff report, that would just face the uh, really the front yard of the neighboring neighboring structure. The, the front the front of the house here, obviously, you can see the steps that would be entering the that required to get up to the front door at the new at the new elevation. Here's a you know a clear photo of the of the story poles today. Obviously, it doesn't give you an exact. Um, you know, there, there's poles off to the right that sort of uh, show the height of the roof line from that portion of the house uh, to kind of show how the elevation of the whole structure would, would be reflected in the roof line. Um, so one of the uh, questions that came up in, in really reviewing this application as it relates to the findings is whether um, this addition, which is obviously located over the northern part of the property would create any uh, significant shading impacts, which is obviously uh, is contained in finding three. Um, so staff met with the neighbor on this side of the house, um, looked at the windows, which are, you're seeing a garage here, and then there's one kitchen window as well, and just the side entry door to the garage. Um, and because these aren't really active, active use areas and because the kitchen, the primary windows are facing to the, to the east, um, staff didn't feel as though this would, would really create a significant shading impact to the, to the neighbor in a way that would really impact their um, available sunlight. Um, so moving on, um, staff met with um, another neighbor um, whose property is shown here. That's, um, if we go back to the site plan in a moment, uh, they live to the west of the property. There were some concerns raised that uh, the the second story addition and the addition of the windows in the office space would create privacy impacts um, to this property. Um, staff feels as though these, these windows are facing the public right of way where there's not a reasonable expectation of privacy as the existing condition and the addition of windows, um, further windows. You know, there are already windows on houses that are across the street from this that, look, that can look toward that property. Um, this would just add additional windows to that and would not change the, the existing uh, relationship between those properties in terms of privacy. Um, this is just a, kind of an example showing um, presumably, you know, original, original architecture that's not raised above the floodplain and then something that, that has been elevated. Um, so I think this is something that we've already we've already seen play out um, through the last couple decades, and, and something that we're seeing now is the necessity of raising a structure above the floodplain. Um, as of now, it is only a requirement when the applicants are going through a substantial remodel to the point where they're going to be exceeding 50% of the value of the of the structure now. Um, but this is just kind of an example of what what that looks like and how that plays out on another property in that in that neighborhood. Uh, ultimately, uh, staff feels as though this this um, this addition, which has been set set back from all um, elevations, um, has a and has an articulation of roof lines between the office and the rear bedroom addition. Um, has sensitively used uh, locations of the clear story windows on the north and south elevation, so as to um, really limit any private potential privacy impacts to um, to adjacent neighbors. Um, looking through. As I discussed, the potential for shading impacts. There would be shading impacts on the northern neighbor, um, but because of the, um, the location of those windows, where they are in the neighboring house, as well as kind of the supplemental letter of support provided by that neighbor, staff doesn't feel that that rises to the level of being a significant uh, impact. So ultimately, staff feels as though all design review findings can be made and recommends approval of the project. Um, and happy to answer any questions you have. All that. right. Thank you very much. Um, Phyllis, do you have any questions for staff on this? Uh, Not at this time. Okay. And then, sorry to interrupt, I just wanted to also call your attention to two additional letters of support uh, that were provided. These were provided by neighbors to the east of the property, so that would be across, um, across San Clemente Creek. Um, and they've, they provided those letters of support, and additional copies are provided at the, at the back of the room as well. Very good. Thank you. Charles, do you have any questions for staff at this point? Um, 
Was, it, was there any change to the landscape that's been discussed? No, other than the expansion of the porch and the addition of the deck. The deck, they show some planters being added, um, kind of leading out from the deck. But beyond that, I think the intent is to maintain the lawn and the existing landscaping. Okay. Um, I guess one of the other clarifications is um, there's a certain portion of the roof on the back by the deck that they actually, it looks like it pops up. Is that correct? And the, I see that in the elevation. Uh, keep going right there on the right. So they're lifting that whole part of the, the, the existing roof up to get a little more space because they're, I think, because they're lifting up the, is that, is that correct? Is that may be something we need clarification from the, from the applicant to okay. speak to that. Yeah. It, um, Okay. Yeah. Well, I have some questions I think that might be best suited for the architect. So with that said, we'll move on to the applicant's presentation. So who's going to do that? For? I don't know whose microphone is that. Yeah, it's off. And I shut this one off before. So. Bob's is off. This on? Yes. Uh, my name is Maureen Jokum. I'm the architect for the Hewlett's. Um, I, I can answer your questions. I just want to give you a little background on the design and how we got to this point. Um, they approached me to do an addition to the house because as the kids are getting older, uh, they needed more space and they both work out of the house. So they wanted to add a master suite and an office. At the same time, they wanted to remodel the living room, dining room, kitchen, remove the masonry fireplace, kind of create a great room. So we first looked at a first floor addition. Um, and when I came up with a couple options, we realized that adding these two rooms on the first floor required reworking of the whole floor plan downstairs to access these two um, spaces. Um, we also realized it used valuable yard space that they really cherish, and it wasn't getting the privacy separation they wanted between the office space and the kids' area of the house. So we went to a second story scheme. Um, realizing that we had to raise the house because it's a su substantial um, remodel, and that we're adding a second floor on a raised house. So I was very concerned about the mass and bulk of the upper level. Um, I was also concerned with cost. <laughs> so first thing we did was try and find a location for the stair where that, didn't Im that minimally impact the floor plan. I didn't want, I wanted to try and avoid using a whole bedroom to get the stair up to the upper level. So I realized that these garages on these units, on these houses are extra deep. So I was able to grab the back portion of the garage to get the stair up. And the only modification I really had to make to, to the floor plan to get that access is to move the, basically enclose what's now the front porch of the house. And that would give me the uh, stair up to the second floor. Um, then with the stair in that location and the fact that we wanted to add, to make the uh, great room, the living room, dining room, kitchen, one big great room, it meant that I had to basically redo the whole roof on that portion of the house because I'm removing the masonry walls and all the, the intermediate support points. So I had a new, new, new roof structure there anyway. So it made sense to try and concentrate the addition on that part of the house and try and leave as much as possible the bedrooms and the, and the bathrooms alone. So all my construction is done on the north side of the house. Um, and then uh, again, going back to the uh, impact of the mass you know, second floor over a raised house. Um, I extended the second floor so that there's a protrusion uh, over the garage, so one extension that way for the office, a little extension in the back for the uh, master bedroom, and that allowed and that allowed the roof uh, height to come down. So the 28 foot height that I call out on the elevation actually occurs in one spot in the middle of the house for a length of ridge that's about a foot. And then from that point, the hips come down to all the corners, so I have a, an eave at the lowest part of, of the perimeter of the second floor. So it's all eaves. And then as Doug mentioned, the office is uh, slightly lower, so there is a step in the plate height of about a foot. So there's a little more articulation in the second floor. Um, what else did I want to say? So as Doug mentioned, all the second floor is recessed on all sides. In the front, that front wall of the master bedroom actually aligns with the front wall of the house, by, but by adding the porch and that lower roof in the front, again, I get that stepped back feeling for the upper level. Um, and to, to answer your question about the roof, basically the whole roof on the back of the house over the, mass, over the living room, dining room, kitchen, if you look at the floor plan, has to come off. And so, and we're raising the ceiling in that because it's going to be one big room. So instead of an eight-foot ceiling, we're going to raise it to nine and a half feet. And that's why you see a raised roof over the, basically, in this area. I'm changing the roof and making it a shed. So that plate's higher than that plate. That's the existing plate height. 
at the bedrooms. You can take the microphone with you. Sorry. <laughs> So this whole area d down below is raised to nine feet, nine and a half feet, I should say, for the living room, dining room, kitchen, one big room. And that's why I, uh, you see a shed roof along that back elevation that's higher than the roof you see along the existing back of the house. What else? Um, everything else I was going to say, Doug's pretty much mentioned. I think you know, we, we dealt with the privacy issues by having the the main windows go front and back uh, with high windows on the side. Um, that's about all. Did you have, you guys have other questions that you can? Charles, yeah, do you have any other questions, Charles, since uh, she was answering your question? Yeah, um, so uh, in raising the home, yes. uh, is that from the, so is that the entire home, the whole existing structure just gets lifted up a few feet? So that's how you maintain the eight foot to the nine foot. It's not like you're just, Putting stairs on it, building up like the whole the whole structure. Needs the whole to be floor structure raises two foot four inches. Yes, almost thirty inches. Two foot four inches, um, and then so the floor level is the same height. I leave the roof on the right hand side exactly the same, and then the, I raise the plate height of the walls of the living room, dining room, kitchen, and then build the floor elevation, the floor of the upper level at that elevation. Okay. Uh, and on the back, it's not labeled. Are you, is that um, also the uh, cement plaster on the whole yes. back side? Yes. Okay. And that's all existing. We're basically. Right. It's uh, one of those I, I would imagine just, lifting the house that it's, <laughs> you know, it's going to take some some rework. But, well, um, and the, the front face of the house is brick along the right. base, so that's not going to happen. So right. we're so probably you're stuck remove with the that, base. Or, yeah. yeah, it'll fall off by the time you're okay. the um, the other, One of the other questions I had is, um, the, the new uh, lap siding that you're doing, it looks like, at least drawn, that it's a different dimension. And I was just wondering why you didn't stay with the same size um, uh, lap siding. Can we look siding. at the elevation again? <clears throat> look at the, uh, the new elevation. Oh, yeah, yeah, I just decided to use a smaller scale at the upper level and mm -hmm. left the larger scale at the bottom level. Right. It's not. So it was a design decision? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, and then the, the, the actual stairs in the front, um, and then it, it's, is it all wood? Do you know what, what material you're going to be doing? The I'm not positive, but I'm going to guess it's wood. Okay. And in the back, the, you, someone was talking about the planters. I didn't want to, because I wanted some kind of outdoor space when you open the doors to this living room. And not just have immediate, you know, landing and some steps down. I created that deck area with steps down to the yard, and then instead of putting railings because I'm so high up a grade, is I did the two planters. In so the that back. In the back. But in the front, it, it looks like you have a from the front elevation, you have a little bit of a a, a, a motion towards a railing. Yes. But yes. It, it, is it just that you're going to do a standard kind of wood painted? The, yeah, uh, most right. likely just standard wood painted railing. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, those kind of details would help me in evaluating. Okay. Um, it, I, I understand it's hand drawn and everything. Yeah. But, <laughs> Old school. Um, more clarification for all, everything that's going to go into the design is always more helpful in us making and defining. Okay. So. Um, I think that for now, that's um, all the questions that I have. So. All right. Thank you, Charles. Uh, Phyllis, do you have any questions? Uh, yes. Doug, would you put up? one of the photographs of the front of the house with the poles. There. The front of the house, your design <coughs> element, is narrower in the front, wider in the back, which adds to the vertical appearance and I was wondering I know why you did the pitch of the roof the way you did because you were matching the garage pitch that line if you could lower it if you could go to the picture of 101 that was the one that was kind of beige that ended up going across the whole top yeah that one if you take away that extension on the right because they ended up, I think, with six bedrooms or something. You could see how the pitch of the second-story roof is less. And 
You're much uh, better at this at figuring the angles than I am, Peter. Yeah, I don't know I'm not that it is. But positive uh, that it is. Oh, it might be just it your gives view angle. The effect, yeah. It gives the effect, and I think, especially since it's narrow in the front, I would prefer seeing a lower pitched roof from both the office and the um, master suite. I don't think, you know, considering it's being raised the three feet, which it should be. Yeah, 30 inches. And the home on the other side is one story. And, and stuff. I just think it wouldn't be so imposing and stand out as much as it does. It would fit in better. I mean, I don't know what, I, as I say my assumption is you made the pitch be equal to the pitch of the garage and to me, that isn't necessary, really. Well, I, honestly, I think the eave of the second floor is going to cut off most of the roof itself. And since it's a hip and pitches back, yeah. I don't think you're going to really... I mean, we can go back to the story pole plan, but I don't think you're going to really be able to... It's going to make that big a difference. And it's just an integrity thing. I could totally right. change the pitch. I mean, I mean, I think, you know, if it was wider, it would, to me... It no, if it was so wider, obvious. the pitch it would be even no, taller. No, I'm saying if... The room itself, that front room, the office, was wider. I don't think the pitch would stand out as much to me as it does. The fact that it's narrower with something wider behind it makes it very obvious to me that it's imposing and coming at me, the height of this building. Um, you can respond to that now or we can do that later but um do you have any other questions that you want to ask her just as clarifications at this time no um, everything else yeah. is fine that was the only issue yeah, i had when may, i was out there taking pictures and looking at other houses in the neighborhood it was something that just stood out to me that sure. it, it was kind of the height of it on it's, one side was kind of glaring looking right now it's definitely taller because it has to be raised but I don't think the pitch of the roof is really going to make that much difference. The, unfortunately, I think Doug and I had this conversation because when he first looked at my elevation, he goes, this looks like it's really tall perched up here. But then when you get on site and you walk on the sidewalk and look up, you realize that the eaves of the lower level and even the eave of the upper level is going to cut off the roof above. Well, you have to be very far away to actually see the full height of that, of that um, uh, pitch, that point on top of the roof. And it doesn't happen in the elevation that's flat. It looks like it's like right at the front, but it's actually, you know, no, seven feet that. back. Yeah. Anything else you want to uh, um, ask her or put on the table for review with her at the moment? No. Okay. We'll come back to this. So, no, I don't want you to sit down yet. Okay. So, thank you. Um, I want to ask you a couple things. Um, we have one section of the building, and um, it only goes one direction, and it's hard to decipher but what I do decipher I believe is that the living room itself is now nine foot six which you stated and then it would appear that the master bedroom itself is also nine foot six is, nine that, feet. is that correct the master bedroom is nine feet nine feet okay and then the master closet and bath are eight feet that's why you get a stop a step in the um, plate height at the back down. okay um, is there um, any reason other than cost that you didn't raise the garage up and then decide to grade up to a garage new slab? We had that discussion today for the first time. So it's definitely, it's more a cost consideration. We might, we might do it. We got word from a contractor today that it might be cheaper to raise the garage than it is to cut the garage away from the house. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't affect the overall height of the building. It would just affect the relationship of the eve of the garage to the eve of the upper level. Right. So. Um, Which might be a good solution because that's a plus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it might be a good solution, and uh, it might uh, help out some of the um, architectural issues. So nine foot on a second story, on t uh, on top of a nine foot six is great. It's a luxury. So we have to have a nine foot up there, but um, it does raise that uh, uh, second floor up to a significant elevation. So what are we, 28 feet, Doug? What was that? 28. Yes. 28, 28 feet, yeah. Um, so, and I am uh, 
curious about your decision to change the upper story to a narrower board. Um, that would be an, an unusual choice um, for the neighborhood, but everything is so uniform, you know. We could change it. That's not a problem. <laughs> it's not. We're not married right. to that. Sometimes yeah, I like to delineate the different levels board. of a house. The other thing is, I think the narrower bands create a higher verticality. More mass. The, the wider, like, actually makes it look, look yeah. lower. And is there a materials board for us to see? I guess not. No. No that, All the colors match existing. In a, in a yes, it is. All the all the materials match existing, and they're they're uh, specified on the on the elevation, which is why I did not require that. But okay. if that's important and we can certainly come back come back with that all right um, so we've um, heard uh, your presentation and asked a couple of questions so uh, we may have you back up okay. so at this point we'll open this up to uh, public comment please so please hi my name is David Johnson I live at 94 Golden Hind Passage um, I'm down the street, across the street, uh, three doors down. And um, I only have three minutes, but first of all, I want to say thank you very much, guys, for doing what you do. Um, I, I was up there 15 years ago for two terms, and, and I, real fe I really feel for all the hard work that you, that, that you put into this. It's a big deal. Thank you very much for doing it. Um, we're going to have sea level rise. Uh, challenging the homes in our neighborhood and and these projects are going to become pre pre precedents for the right way to uh, change the homes raise them and mitigate uh, and to protect the property against rising tides and so um, you should see each one of these as a precedent because this can be set an example for how to how to move on I hope that you will um, disagree with staff on the recommendation and I hope that you'll ask the applicant to reconsider a few things and I think you've touched upon them the um, I had a chance to review the plans I think in the presentation tonight there were some other homes in the neighborhood that were not included in the examples I think that the examples that staff gave were um, uh, additions that had a uh, massing of mass forward and I don't think all of them were were as uh, represented as many diverse um, good uh, integrated s s solutions that we have in the I in the neighborhood of the same house plan I think there's better examples of integrated into the plan so I think that um, I think it can be more harmonious and I think that what you're getting up on is that the the second story is disproportionate in the way that it's detailed and the massing is too far forward so there's ways I think that you could ask that they study that um, to be more to have a solution that's more integrated into the rest of the house um, the larger windows above are further exacerbating it and I think along with the narrow boards if you look at the the massing on the front you have larger windows above and the smaller windows of the of, uh, of the ground story so the suggestions I would make would be to um, uh, um, the, the addition is too far forward so I mitigating the mass on the street and that could even be done with something like a transitional a element like a deck off of the office um, so something to uh, mitigate and transition from the garage to the to the office um, grading up the garage to reduce the overall height of the second story um, moving the wall of the office back um, lowering the ceiling height perhaps looking at a pitch and then you touched upon the wider the uh, stain with a single board width and windows that are more harmonious in the size of the uh, the windows of the rest of the house some combination of all those things would improve this application thank you very much thank you Dave thank you very much um, who else would like to get up and speak I'll, I'll uh, take a crack at it <laughs> I'm the homeowner <laughs> So I just thought I would just give oh, my... No. Is, is there a time for me to speak? 
That would have been in the earlier presentation. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Can I speak now or should I? Um, have I missed my window? No, you can. We'll, <laughs> I don't have much to say. We'll allow it tonight. Um, I okay. think that it's, it's appropriate. So um, please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So it's just simple. I just wanted to kind of explain that I've been there for about 12 years in the house. We love the neighborhood. We don't want to leave the neighborhood. Our kids attend the school. That was, we were lucky enough to have that built while we were there. So uh, that was just a stroke of good luck, but it really adds to the fact that we, we, we love the neighborhood. We, we don't know you yet, so we should, <laughs> but, but I know Franz and Margaret across the street, we're friends with those guys and with most of the neighbors around. So, um, you know, we, we like where we live. We, we uh, have now the situation where both my wife and I work from home. We've got two kids, a boy and a girl. They've been sharing a room. As they get older, it's going to become problematic. So we thought about maybe trying to find a solution. I'm very open to all the suggestions that are made. Um, I really just want what's best for the neighborhood and, uh, you know, just make a home so we can stay here and continue to enjoy the great neighborhood that we have. So it's really my two cents. So. Okay, thank you very much. Who else would like to speak, please? Good evening, you all. My name is Margaret Deedy, and I and my husband live at 110 Golden Hine. Would you all be kind enough to put up that shot again of that property? 110 Golden Hine. Tell me when I'm, when I've arrived there. It wasn't any of these ones. No, nope, was not. Okay. Really it's directly right across this. There, there, that's the one. If you will look at this property, the two windows that you can see in front are two of our bedroom windows. While it is true that you can drive down the street and you see them, you're on eye level when you do that. The way this proposed addition has been designed. It's high, it's unattractive, and it's intrusive. You sit in the office, if you look at where the windows are that look out on 110 Golden Hine, you are looking directly into those rooms at an elevated position, not at street level. Furthermore, the light which we get in the morning is dramatically reduced if you have this addition at this height and this density in that location. Another factor when you look at the neighborhood of Mariner Cove, you will notice that there are many streets that are much wider than Golden Hine. Prince Royale is one of them. Several of the pictures you showed um, on Golden Hine, closer to Cove School, it's a wider area of the street. Where 109 is located and we are located, it's narrow. Therefore, the proximity of houses is very close and the depth of distance doesn't exist. The gentleman who spoke before me put it in a nutshell, and the lady at the table expressed some concerns that my husband and I have directly on this. We understand the need for the expansion. We understand the importance of keeping good neighbors. But in doing so, everyone's privacy, which is critical, everyone's natural light, which they had when they bought the home, and the ability to sell a home without having a negative consequence that intrudes on the privacy of the subject home is something that you all need to take into consideration as you look and evaluate these plans. I would respectfully request, my husband and I, that you work with the gentleman and his family and try to mold this so that it either fits into the neighborhood, is reduced in size and height, and meets the requirements that you have in your planning department. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Anyone else going to speak up tonight? Seeing none, uh, we'll bring it back up here to the dais. I won't close the public hearing yet um, because uh, we will uh, have the architect or the uh, property owner back up to discuss this. So after hearing any of that, um, I have some 
specifics that I would ask of the applicant, but uh, I'm going to come back to you, Phyllis, um, and see if you can um, decide um, what you'd like to say about it. I think what I, we're headed for here is a um, ask for a, a continuance to uh, either a date uncertain or a date certain um, based on what I'm hearing. So I'll let you go at it. Okay. I agree with you because I could not approve this as we see it tonight. And um, would you go back to the picture of the photo of the house? So, yep, nope, there. I think, didn't you have another one that was more head on than that? That was it? Okay. And it's my photos I took that one. It isn't harmonious with the neighborhood, the way it looks now. As I say, it, he's a great architectural, sorry, it comes at you rather than get into the, the details um, of it. I mean, I understand the narrow and then the wide. I mean, you are going to, you're raising it three feet, you want to have a nine and a half foot ceiling height downstairs for the great room, the combination of the living room, dining room, kitchen, whatever. And then you want a nine foot ceiling for the bedroom. Now, as I remind people all the time, the uh, figures that you see in the ordinance and stuff, whether it's FAR or setbacks, and height limitations are guidelines. They're not givens. Just because 30 feet is the height limit, that doesn't mean 30 feet is what we're going to allow if it doesn't work on the site. And granted, you're at 28. But 28 is very tall for having one side of the house like that. It just... You know, whether it's not integrated right, it, it looks like it's not harmonious with itself and it's not harmonious with the other homes in the neighborhood is the best way I could put it. And I don't like, you know, criticizing someone's work because I know a lot of work went into it, you know, by the architect and a lot of feelings that you have. I, I want you to have your addition. I understand the need for your addition, but it has to be something that works with the neighborhood, that doesn't overpower the other homes, especially I know one home is only one story. I, forget, I think the one on the other side is also one story. Yes, okay. Both adjacent homes are yeah, one both story. Both adjacent homes are one story. And, you know, going back to, I talked about 101, which is two homes down. Yes, it's a lot bigger addition, but by having part of the addition spread across the top of the roof, it doesn't come at your face the way yours does. And I really think you should go back to the drawing board and see some of the things that you could do to have it just fit more in the neighborhood. I mean, as far as, uh, where is the drawing of the windows? To see what Margaret is talking about. Actually, Margaret, I thought it was interesting that you were concerned about the windows looking down. I'd be concerned about people at street level looking straight in. Usually when you're looking down, you only see maybe a foot or two into the room, if anything at all. Well, we'll get you up to talk later. Okay, yeah, but thank you. what I'm saying is, yeah. uh, trying to figure out which window she's talking Is it the, the front. front of the house? Front. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not good. The, I want to see a design and then I'll look at the windows until you see the design. 
you know, a redesign that fits. It's hard to say, well, use this size window or that size window. You've got to see something as a whole and not as pieces. Uh, I know, as I say, I did like the idea of grading the garage up. I think it would be a way to make it more harmonious. And I don't know what kind of cars you have, but if the water is rising, I'd kind of want the garage up too. I, you don't want to lose your car. And, and I expect the paneling to all be the same width. I don't think it's at all helpful to change, you know, the two stories. Okay. I think that's about it. I'll let Charles right. come up with some stuff. Thank you, Phyllis. Um, Charles, I'd like your commentary, please. Uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, I drove through the neighborhood, and I guess the reason that the, the thicker uh, shiplap um, caught my eye is the majority of the houses do have that wider shiplap, and also a lot of the two-story additions I've seen keep a consistency of materiality as it transitions from the upper to the lower. So I think that it's more in line with a lot of the other additions and in general what I've seen in the houses. So that I would request that you explore that also because it'll help you with your vertical um, issue. I do think that that front addition uh, of the office does read extremely vertical um, because you're not elevating the garage. I think in the rear of the house, it's acceptable. I think also the story poles, because you don't carry uh, basically netting over to where that eave is and then show the relationship of the overall mass that's moving up, right? It, it also accentuates even the rear. Um, so the story poles are a little deceiving. And I think because we don't have, in, in lieu of these being hand-drawn, we don't have like 3D renderings or anything else where we can see the full build in its entirety and understanding it. So it is this kind of piece and parcel, which makes it hard. Um, you know, the, the other thing I, I just, um, for design review in general, the level of drawings, um, you know, is it is it schematic, the design development, construction drawing level? Like, what what is usually when it comes? Is there there's no um, expectation? Well, as we're already discussing tonight, the level of changes that are are you know being discussed here, um, typically applicants won't go to the, the finer level of detail than what you're seeing, as far as preparing construction drawings because. Whether it's coming in for two hearings or four, um, it's it's not generally something that that the applicants will invest in at this early date. Yeah. So the goal is to to kind of look at the massing and the overall. Before. But when we get into materiality, I feel like there's a little bit there's not enough definition for me to truly entirely understand what the proposition is. So mm -hmm. uh, um, just just. Um, you know, also, like, I, the garage, it's unclear if you're keeping the door or doing a new door, existing kind of versus new, th th things like that, just clarifications about what we're looking at. I, I know you're not doing anything in the garage, so I would assume that, but just, um, you know, if, if there was. Um, the other thing is, is, you know, if we did, say, move forward, um, but then they decided they wanted to move the garage, right, they would have to come back for another design review anyway? Is that potentially? Yeah, I mean... Obviously, if that's what is actually being looked at and proposed, we'd want that to include that in, in, in a set of plans. It, it wouldn't necessarily um, be required. Obviously, it could be um, either uh, accepted with what is being presented and in, encourage the option of regrading it or require it um, at the discretion of the of the commission. Obviously, what we're looking at, though, and not just to get back, this gets to some of your questions about the materials we asked for, obviously we, the main goal and the main need here is to make sure we have all the information necessary for the commission to determine whether it can make the findings or not. So it relates back to those, those findings and those elements. So that's right. where the basis for what we asked for. But, you know, basically we do ask for all of the things that you see um, in the plans the set that you have. Materiality um, oftentimes so we'll get a landscape plan if there's things going to be changed about the landscape um, or as Doug had mentioned before um, sometimes um, if it's existing to match we'll do that but I think we're hearing tonight that there's some some 
vagaries, I think, to what is actually being proposed. So um, it may not be exactly uh, as specified in the plans tonight. All right, before I go on, Phyllis, you have something you want to say? Yeah, I uh, usually, too, we see a rendering of it, yeah. and there isn't. I mean, if you look at uh, eight, when we just did, they have a drawing. We, we have a checklist that we that we use for submittals, and we go through each of those items and make sure that each one of those things is met. And at this time, um, a rendering, you know, a, a different perspective drawing isn't required. Mm -hmm. It's not a required. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe okay. it should be in Peter's to no. put yeah. together the list. So it, it's helpful, but I, yeah. I understand. Um, so I think at this point, um, we'll ask the architect to come back up in a minute, but um, I want to jump in here with some things. And then I'll ask you to respond to it, and we'll ask you to ask if you want to continue to a date certain, or a, which, if it's not a date certain, then we'd have to go through noticing. But if you said in four weeks you'll be ready again, then that would be um, the thing to do if you want to not do noticing again. Um, but the story poles would either have to be adjusted and uh, so forth. But that remains to be seen what we will ask of you. So my commentary um, goes back to a number of issues and that in the Golden Hind Circle, there are a number of homes that are uh, raised homes that have second stories that do not have the bulk. Um, they might have some advantages over placement of the second floor that this one does not. Um, but as you drive around that circle, there's some homes that do not have the visual impact that this one does. They may have more mature landscaping, but in general, there's some options that um, I, th I think you need to explore and I'm going to ask you to explore. So the first one is obviously the raising of the garage because that creates a, a smaller differential from the first floor to the office up above it. Um, even though it's not required by the flood uh, uh, requirements, um, you know, uh, many people are grading their garage up so you don't have this separation. And um, the whole neighborhood will be coming up eventually. Um, I think our absentee uh, flood board member would uh, attest to that. Um, I would ask that you consider uh, reducing that master bedroom uh, to an eight foot plate height and you can use a scissor truss or something so that inside of the room you would have an angled uh, corner of the room around it. You might get your nine foot inside of that, but you'd go to an eight foot plate height. That would essentially drop that uh, roof by a foot on top up there and you would equalize your, your roof layout. Um, I don't think that's a big sacrifice for um, that bedroom and it would reduce the overall height of the house. Secondly, um, consider the um, reduction of the office space um, and you might even consider putting a hip roof on the front of the garage so that it would not, so you'd have a gentle slope back. That's not something I'm going to stand by. But I do think uh, per Mr. Johnson's comment that the windows on the addition need to be similar to, equal to, proportionate to the building um, as they are on the first floor and are typical in the neighborhood <coughs> such that um, they'd be higher for um, the office, higher for the bedroom. Uh, they wouldn't look down so much. It would be a higher sill inside the room, maybe a four-foot sill. Um, I'm not sure how high that would be. But um, they are different windows right now in your elevation and I think they should be similar to in kind of the windows. Um, so that's um, four different design options tossed out there to help um, lower the impact of that front office looming over the rest of the street, so to speak, as I might say. Um, and I think you would simplify some of the construction with a single staircase. Um, I know it would be a pain in the neck to disconnect the garage from the house. It's expensive to pour a slab and so forth, but I think that might be appropriate to bring it up. You would then um, make it consistent with the other 
uh, homes in the area that are raising up to uh, the FEMA level. And um, it, they look quite good when they're raised up. Um, I think the garage drop down would ultimately look like an anomaly um, and that it needs to uh, set the precedent to raise the garage, follow the precedent to set, bring up the garage. You're going to be uh, trashing the yard. Um, at some point, you'll need to produce a landscape plan. At some point, these plans need to show any exterior lighting on it. Um, the front porch needs to be detailed a little better. Um, and I would ask that you come back in with a uh, materials board that shows the stucco and the uh, lap siding and the roofing and the trim colors and uh, determine whether or not you're going to do a new garage door. So that said, would you mind stepping up to the microphone and we'll continue I, this? I, I did. Can I uh, touch on a few other things too? Yes. So, so I did mention the, the rear um, uh, roof that slopes all forward yeah. and then has that side edge. And mm -hmm. I guess from a detailing standpoint, both flashing and others, I, I find it an awkward moment where it's able to blend in all the other hipped roofs and every, you know, basically I, I, you know, I understood why you were doing it, but I felt like if there's some way to, to blend it in, either, you know, do an angle to split it and angle it in both directions or something in the, in the rear. So, oh. um, this, this roof on the back, on the back of the kitchen. Yeah. Um, I just feel coming straight out like that and then just popping up the side. I just, I, um, the shed roof on top of that where, yeah, the else. shed roof is a little, um, right. Uh, I just it feels awkward to me. It doesn't feel in unison with the the rest of the, the roofs and how well they're blended into each other. And so, I just if you're going to go back and revise it, I would just ask that you look at solutions that e bring that into either its own unique situation or but not just dead end it and cut it off and bring it down to a, a, a different roof. Um, the, okay. Yeah, oh. and, and um, the other one is is. Uh, the discussion about the, the outdoor patio on the second if so hopefully you know you you can save some money and you you, you raise the garage and it, it helps with those issues but if you choose to leave it down lower the idea of doing a patio with a with not a transparent wall but something that's a little higher so that there's multiple step backs in the massing right. might also alleviate that problem I'm not promising that it will but I think it might be worth study if if you go from a construction standpoint towards that that direction and I've seen it on other houses in my neighborhood more on the back of the houses I'm on on the lagoon and um, it's a great way of really kind of breaking up that mass and and, and stepping it up and and, and um, you know it's more inviting also it's not such a big frontal kind of base to the to the to but all right. Okay. Would you Thank mind you. standing up and uh, uh, Adam? Do, do you want us to just uh, take a? Well, I want to clarify a couple things. Sure. So well, hang on a second. Oh, uh, do you want us to make a motion on all of this tonight, or just to um, ask the the applicant whether they want to continue to do a date certain with the uh, recommendations that we're stating? Well, I think obviously the discussion is still continuing, but I think it would be helpful, obviously, as we've seen in the last project, to provide as much clarity as possible for the applicant in, in terms of continuing the hearing if, or right. requesting. Um, so that's that's clearly something okay. that All right. you can do. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, you said you had some clarifications you wanted to well, make. Well, just a couple things. The overall height of the building can only come down by the ceiling height of the two rooms. You suggested eight foot upstairs, which I think is a decent compromise. But the main height is coming from raising the house 30 inches. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. And Understood. the fact that the roof, I mean, my distances that I go on the hip are not very far. So the roof's pretty low. I mean, I could definitely change it to four and 12. I, I'll let go of that. So that would raise, lower it a little bit instead of five and 12. But if you look at the roof plan, there's not long distances of, of pitch. You know, the 28 foot happens right in the middle of the, of the roof. Yeah. I know the main problem is Can you get to the mic, please? I'm sorry. sorry. The main problem is the office over the garage. If the garage doesn't get raised, there's a disproportionate mass 
seem, seemingly so, of the, of the office over the garage. So I don't want to tie my client into raising the garage. I think it's a good idea. It's, it's a question of cost, whether we can maybe lower the mass of the office just in case we don't want to raise the garage. That's, that's my only thing. I totally think that raising the garage would make the whole second floor seem more like the master bedroom uh, part there in the back which is a more reasonable relationship between the two. And one thing that someone brought up is because we didn't redo the eave along the house that's 30 inches higher, the whole second floor looks higher than it will be because I don't have a story pole showing that the eave's going up by 30 inches, right? Because right? oh. that's kind of an awkward thing to do and I decided not to do that. But that might help you realize that you know, the second floor doesn't sit as high as everyone thinks it does. It's the whole house that's going up. And then, back to your point, my problem with... Mike seems to have disappeared under on you. Maybe it's off. I can speak louder. <laughs> no, there oh, it there it is. It's back now. Okay. The, the, the whole issue we have structurally with putting a second floor on a first floor when you want all the second floor walls inboard of the first floor walls is that you need to take those loads to the perimeter. And so that's why on the back of the house, I showed a shed roof with a little mini gable end so that I can support that back of the house all the way to the um, exterior wall. If I, what I would like to do is do a hip all the way around, but if I do a hip, I got a beam sticking out of the roof. And that's the problem. That's why the easy solution is always, right. yeah. Yeah. It's always to take these walls to the perimeter, but nobody likes that because then you have two-story walls. So I guess what I'm, getting at here is that there's some considerations you have to go through and you have to decide how to get to a uh, resolution which drops the mass of the house uh, overall and the things that we're putting on the table gotcha. are one the raising of the garage specifically you may have other solutions that um, drop the disproportionate uh, mass of the office over the garage that's your choice to figure okay. out um, I think that um, when I talk about dropping the plate height on the second floor to eight foot, and you can use a truss that would give you a nine foot in the middle, in the middle of the room, you could still get that, but the roof line would right. drop. I, I understand. So that you works. can get that, um, and that would drop a foot off of that. Um, I don't know quite how to deal with the massing of that office other than the two things one is to raise the garage and drop it back you have other possibilities you're the architect i think that the window proportions need to be adjusted and i, I think we can all agree to these things the window proportions um, adjusted so that they don't look like big squares inside of a square it would uh if they were l l more rectangular they would uh make that second floor look a little more horizontal than the box within a box right now. So you've got a square box of those windows within a larger box. And if you had rectangular windows that were higher, sills in the rooms, they, it wouldn't look quite so that, and they need to relate, I think, from a design standpoint. Um, recently, there was another project that um, went through a lot of appeal, um, but it was a well-designed second floor addition that really sat on top of the house in a very nice way. Um, I'm sure the planning department would give you a good view of that. They did somewhat the same thing, put a master bedroom on the second floor, and it fits right in. It, it looks very good on top. I think it's a good example of that. Adam. Which you, one? Right. The, the one they weren't raising at least at this point that no, was one but of the, the, but the configuration did. of the second floor over the main house whether it's raised or not it's just how it, it settled into the house no I, I, that, that architecture was proportionate we we're happy to yeah. share the and I don't previous think this is, and I, I just want to add no, that no. that you know obviously each each case is different and although they may be in we're looking at different second stories in a similar neighborhood different houses are at different elevations mm -hmm. they did the work at different times and the base flood elevation has continued to increase okay. so first of all there's houses that have second story additions that weren't raised at all yeah. don't have the differential between a garage and the the lower floor because they didn't need to raise it right. then you have others that may have portions may have been raised but not to this extent because they were done at a time when that wasn't that height wasn't required. So I just want to 
caution us against look, you know, considering these things to be apples and apples when maybe there's more difference between I, each case. So. I do understand that. Um, and I, I was aware that that other one was designed by you. So I think that that one, I mentioned it for the public record that, that it was a better sighting or situation of the second floor on top of the house and it just fits architecturally better. Um, and speaking to those other uh, residences in the neighborhood that seem to have been raised, you're right, they may not have been raised to the same level, but their architecture is such that the second level isn't as imposing as this one does. If we approved this, I think it would be a, uh, a dare I say, like a bunker box on top of the garage. It just uh, would be too much. There are some additions on the uh, Madeira Gardens area that look like this or worse, and we don't want that. So, yeah. So, in your mind, is the office too far forward? Is that the bulk you're talking about? Uh, it's part of the other bulk. Than, other than the height. Uh, the height is definitely. Yeah, I know the height's issue. an issue. And, and I, if I look at the photograph and I think, oh my God, it's right there in front. It's like a Green larger edifice. Elevation. And so it looks too big, too close to the front of the house. Yeah, you have to stand up if you're going to speak and so forth. So, so you guys, I'm, I'm trying to understand to be as clear as possible. I know how the redesign should be. Yes. Is that office too far forward? I, I, would you say so, Phyllis? With a I'd six like foot setback. Further back, if right. possible. Charles? Uh, it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> That's we're yeah. so scientific. Yeah, well, we're not. No, so I mean, I, I don't know that. Yeah. So to me, I think, um, of course, uh, given a change in massing, I think having it that forward, you can you, you can do design solutions that would allow that. Um, Another one is to move the massing in other directions over other parts of the roof. You know, I mean, that's... Right. No, it's just a cop. Right. I understand. And, and, and I mean, that's why that... I, I think it's at such a preliminary level that I don't think we can just pick one solution and say it's approvable, right? I, th I think that y we need you to... No, I, am I just want to understand what you guys think the major issues are, <coughs> so I'm designing within parameters that you guys can approve. Right. That's all. Well, that's what I was trying to remunerate. So, okay. um, and the office is far forward in that bulk and height right now. If the bulk and height were, if the height issue were uh, somehow m ameliorated, then you know, then that uh, height difference might not be so uh, problematic. And I can't tell unless I sit down and draw it out whether that's the case or not. Um, but I, th I would ask that you look at it and. Um, see if that addresses the issue. Um, if you can acknowledge what we're talking about, that would be helpful. If you can say, yes, it's a, it looks uh, boxy on top of that structure as it is, um, and it's too big. But if, if you don't feel that way, then we have to ask you to uh, oh, reduce no, the height and, back, height and mass of it and possibly move it back and change those windows to be more horizontal. Right, I mean, just look at it in proportion, right? So the bottom, all from the ground all the way up to the top of the garage is less than the second story. Right, because the right? garage is not, yes, you're well, right. Whatever it is, I right. mean, just the proportions of the massing, it usually, when you build two stories, they're both eight, nine feet. They're, you know, they go up eight or nine feet. There's not this drastic one-third, two-third almost kind of experience. And okay. so... I think, yes, that's probably the primary. Whether it's from the front or the side, okay. it's still the same condition. So, I, um, I just want to say that we don't usually get into this bit of banter here between um, the, the No, no, I'm just trying to understand. Right? And I just want to make so, sure when you're asking for changes that there are yeah. changes that I can do. That's all. Phyllis? One of the things that's interesting to me, at least looking at the south elevation, the front part of the second story does not look so non-harmonious because of the width it matches more. I think when you look at it from the front, it's narrow and tall. Looking at it from the side, the width helps the, tricks the eye into bringing the height down. And I think that's one of the problems with that office is it's not wide enough to match, you know, what the height is. Now, maybe the homeowner wants the, doesn't want the office to be the width of the bedroom, something, but it could be 
wider and shallower. You know, move it back and right. make it. Right. I don't. I don't think that's the solution because I think right now I only have a 30 inch offset between the garage and the second floor. So I think if I made it wider, you're almost talking about stacking the walls. So I don't think that's necessarily a solution, but I understand what you're saying. I mean, the whole addition goes front to back versus side to side. So from the front of the house, it's not as, right. not mean, like 30 Prince Royal where it's very balanced. So I just have to relook at that. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different I mean, it could be that That's that front patio see. roof just extends okay. out all the way across. I, there's a lot of different yeah, no, ways I, to, I, I understand. So I'd like to put an end to this um, free-for-all here. So um, at this point, um, I think you've heard quite a bit. I think you could also uh, uh, take some flimsy sketches into the staff and say, um, is this in the right direction? Are we headed there or not? You know, and... Um, you might get a, a good response or uh, uh, let's see, um, I don't know. But the second part of this is, do you want to continue to a date certain? Um, that would be, no, right. so it could, it could if, if the desire is to continue it to a date certain, it could be the, the next hearing or it could be the hearing after that or right. as you whatever I don't think they could do it in two weeks. It, it's 27th or the 13th or the yeah or the two weeks after that as well or the 27th do we also know the schedules on those other not at this time but so it sounds like the desire would be to continue it to a date certain not at the next meeting but the meeting following 13th um, to provide adequate time for okay. for a response that's one two three that's four weeks Okay. Does that work? Yeah. 13th. Yeah. Okay. It's worth so looking at that. That's the... Uh, I, would, I would recommend the... A motion would be good. Yeah. Just okay. To, just so, to and sure. it has to be a 3-0 motion, correct? Uh, it's the majority. Actually, it's just a majority of the commission. Okay. So that said, that's um, one of you make a motion to ask to continue to uh, March that's 13th. Here. I'll move that this application be continued until March the 13th. A second from Charles? I second it. Okay. Voice vote. Oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Johnson. Who is Mr. Johnson? Dave Johnson. Who's the guy who spoke? The neighbor. I thought his name was Dave Sherwood. Dave what? His name is Dave Johnson. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I thought he said a different last name. Continue. Um, all right. So with that said, uh, Mr. Lee, would you care to report on the council meeting? Yeah, um, specific to the Planning Commission, uh, there was the, uh, the, the challenge of, um, or the appeal of, of a previous ruling of the Planning Commission, um, which the Council also uh, made the findings to approve, um, and it was a unanimous decision as well as the Planning Commission. So, um, to deny the appeal and approve the application. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Um, also, um, they brought forward the change to the, the zoning and general plan uh, that we discussed, and um, uh, that also was approved. Um, so the the um, the uh, unit per acre at 15.4, and then um, huh? 15.1, I think. 15.1. Okay. Um, and then also, uh, as part of that, um, they, it, Adam extended the, the 0.4 FAR for consideration, um, which they also um, found uh, okay and, and approved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, so there was another one that I would like a little more clarification. So there was also the discussion that, um, which Tom brought up about Calif the um, town being one of only 13 towns that were that um, uh, and that's they didn't they didn't actually get into detail or do any presentations but I, I guess I just was thought it was pertinent to 
I thought it applied to what we're doing. Oh, this was at the so. end of the meeting. I must have must have okay. left actually um, before that. Right, and, and, and I, I, also, I also read an article in the Marin IJ. Yeah. So um, you know, I think it's related to our ordinance and everything in relationship to new state um, laws and, and being sure, in I compliance with that. it. I can report on that. When we get, okay, when we get to okay. Uh, so. You might want to s the map that I sent to you. you might want to send I get, to the I other can one. Too. Yeah, no, that's fine. We'll. Because I sent it to uh, Todd asked me to send it to him, and he was distributing it to the council members. So you may as well distribute it to the other planning commission. Yeah. So then okay. the other the other um, really in depth presentation that was uh, very enlightening was the um, the proposal for the renewal uh, or uh, on 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 the voting. Um, of the one half cent sales tax and the proposal from the new public works director to actually maybe even consider a three quarters um, cent increase. Um, and uh, in that in particular, it was uh, in, in identifying what future needs for the town would be, in particular in relationship to flood control, given sea rise and um, the state of the uh, flood control pump stations and other um, uh, infrastructure and an anticipated need to upgrade those. He actually thought um, to adequately meet the needs that a three-quarter cent might be uh, more favorable. Very important uh, piece to keep the town functioning. Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, that's all you want to say about the town council meeting? Um, I, th I believe so. Yeah. Okay. So. Adam. Um, your thoughts on that uh, letter and so forth about? Sure. You know, yeah, I'll, I'll give a brief report on some of the news that came out of um, from the State Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, they are doing their um, sort of doing their duty under the new legislation that was passed by the state uh, last year uh, related to uh, Senate Bill 35 and are now required to sort of um, uh, report uh, on a uh, uh, progress that each jurisdiction in the state is, is uh, each jurisdiction's progress toward their housing element require, requirements. In other words, their uh, progress towards meeting the RENA requirements, as you're familiar with those, of course. Um, and as part of that, they came out with um, uh, sort of the two for the for the Bay Area, anyways. Um, how everyone in the Bay Area and throughout the state, every, there's different cycles. So we're the Bay Area is in uh, year two of eight in terms of our progress, or the two years. Uh, sorry, the we're year two of eight of our fifth cycle of the housing element. So we basically are. Um, uh, a quarter of the way through that eight-year cycle. And so the maps that came out, and they came out with sort of a this is statewide, but for the Bay Area, the maps came out, and four, four jurisdictions in the Bay Area are actually on target to meeting their requirements for very low, low, moderate, and overall housing production. Um, and Corte Madero was one of those four jurisdictions, and therefore the reason why they're doing this is not only to report out, but they're also saying what jurisdictions are subject um, to streamlining provisions under the new SB 35 law, um, which um, essentially streamlines um, the application process um, for potentially streamlines application pr process for applicants who want to build multifamily housing. So um, basically that means that Corte Madera is not subject at this time to those streamlining provisions. They will come out with another report after year three of eight, which is just in April of this year. We're going to have to actually by April 1st, the town is required to submit its um, uh, annual housing report <coughs> to HCD, and so we'll see. They, they, we'll see how they they're doing sort of a prorated formula based on the full eight-year cycle and what you've developed in aggregate. To, yeah, to this point. Um, so we'll see what their formula comes out with for uh, the town um, 
following April, and they'll probably come up with something else. Um, just so you know, there's three different levels, whether you're subject to streamlining at all, um, each jurisdiction. The, the next level is if you're sort of meeting certain targets for your um, uh, above moderate housing, if you've basically built um, or are on pace to build all your above moderate housing, you qualify for streamlining, um, or one of the criteria for quali qualifying for streamlining is that you um, then have to provide 50% of all the, of a project um, for affordable housing at various income levels, meaning low and, and very low. Uh, it might just be low and moderate income levels. Um, and then if you are not on pace for meeting above moderate income housing, then you only have to provide 10% of your project for um, as affordable housing in order to qualify for streamlining. There's actually 11 different um, sort of criteria for you to qualify for streamlining and, and this what we're what I'm talking about is just that one of those 11 criteria so there's a lot of other things that would need to happen in order for a, a private applicant to qualify for that streamlining provision so that's how it gets very complex there's other things like you have to hire um, uh, uh, your your the labor to build the projects has to be a prevailing wage which is a, a something that is going to, um, I think the general thinking, uh, as was reported in the IJA, was that that is going to um, eliminate many suburban communities from consideration by private applicants who, who don't build prevailing wage generally, and unless you're in building high rise, you know, something of, of more substantial construction and so on. So there's others, though. That's another one. There's there's ten others. So union that, contractors pay prevailing wage. Yes, and that's what I'm saying. A lot of the most development in the suburbs isn't hiring union contractor for housing development. Um, Thank you. It, absolutely. For that clarification, I, I, I appreciate it. No, there's a lot to it, and I'm happy, yeah, we can, you know, there's, um, the other thing that I think happened at the council meeting was an actual letter uh, by, endorsed by the council in, um, uh, uh, raising concerns about the proposed legislation SB 827 um, which would further sort of it's another housing legislation proposed by um, Scott Wiener, Scott Wiener Forgive me. that would Forgive me. that would further sort of um, streamline and allow for housing um, despite towns rules that may limit um, height and density in certain areas so Keep, it's a never, you know, always got to keep a watch on, on what's going on in the housing world these days. It's very, uh, very interesting, very sort of, but um, I think, um, obviously, I think one of the things that the town council adopted and which happened at the last council meeting and that the commission heard about was, was sort of, at, at least we, you know, have some rules that um, for areas of town now that specify intended density for housing and the FAR provisions do provide some additional clarity for what what the town's rules really are and are, are intended to be for those areas for the time being so I'll end on, I'll end on that <laughs> oh we're letting you off the hook okay so um, <laughs> Um, out of that appeal, have you been notified of any further action by the appellant? Not at this time, no. Okay. Uh, may I add something which I thought was interesting? Uh, Rebecca was talking to me the next day, uh, and she said, Rebecca Vaughn. Yeah, I'm not and, sure we can bring that up, but... Um, uh, no, it has to do with what happened, and she said how nice it was to see the neighbors stand up and talk in favor of the applicant. And all of us were at the meeting in front of the Planning Commission, and it certainly wasn't that way. So I just thought it was an interesting thing to share with the rest yeah. of you. That's true. Okay, um, so I see that, you know, we've got this, uh, your Planning Commission rules and procedures for next time, and the yeah. uh, hearing at 4 and 6 Manzanita Don't is going glad. to make it. 
Yes. Okay. Four or six minutes in either. I am not going to wear sackcloth and ashes. Um, I want to ask um, if I may have um, other uh, neighbors contacted you besides the immediately adjacent neighbors. To 406. There's been a yeah. I mean, I think there's there's been a quite a bit of um, work done by the. Um, homeowner to reach out to other neighbors and so, so with that said I did, will the uh, packet include the contact information for neighbors beyond the immediately adjacent yes. so like two doors down and so forth um, uh, well whoever requests that they would like us to have their right. um, okay. information shared with the Commission yes. all right will you guys if you hear anything from them will you check uh, particularly with um, there's one applicant from a, a, a house in between the two there's a house in between the two that I'm thinking of to the east and some time ago that applicant uh, objected to the remodeled house that is to the east of this project and I would like to can you follow up with me on that I'll yeah, we'll, okay. we'll be sure right. that I think we'll just to get clarity on what yeah okay may I ask shouldn't the notice goes out to homes within what 500 300 feet 300 feet shouldn't we ask the applicant to contact those people and have something in writing from people within we, 300 feet they, they are not required to do so they are asked to contact but they're not required to do but that should we say if you say contact I, they obviously it looks like they took that contact to be the immediate neighbors and I'm saying shouldn't we talk about contacting the same neighbors within the same radius as those that have to be noticed we'll find out we'll get a, 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 li a a list of what uh, who is contactable from mr. Bush yeah so that's why we'll leave it okay now. and then we'll go on to uh, the minutes um, I have an amendment of, can three or five of us approve these minutes if the three of us yes. are all there I have an amendment for the January 9th meeting on page I guess it's page two, page four, excuse me. The last paragraph. It says Vice Chair Metcalf discussed, can't read my own high. I'd, it has to do with, I, it's terrible and I, can't, I wrote it so badly I can't read it. Discussed view, lighting, and privacy impacts. However, she said that losing an hour of morning sunlight, and this is the part that was left out, around the pool in the winter is not a burden it was not rather than just the idea of losing an hour of sunlight it was around the pool during the winter um I recall saying in the meeting that uh, three 24-inch box plantings and, and the, the application came back with one um, and that was an agreement or something. Yeah, the, we went back to the tape and there was, uh, I think the way it wound up was like uh, two, two of a particular type of planting, uh, or one of another, okay. but we, we did go to the, go to the tape for, okay. for that. All right. Uh, Charles, do you have any changes to this? No. Okay. So uh, a motion for uh, the minutes of January 9th as amended by Phyllis Metcalf. So moved. Okay. All no, in favor. Aye. 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 Oh. I'll second it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll move the minutes from the uh, 23rd of January. I second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 
All right, so that means that um, we're going to adjourn this meeting. Meeting adjourned.